Mexico, 1937. A team of doctors investigate a case of poltergeist activity surrounding a 13-year-old boy. They believe the phenomenon may be something called RSPK, Recurrent Spontaneous Psychokinesis. It works like this. Rather than an entity haunting him, RSPK suggests the boy is gifted and inadvertently levitating objects, cutting things with no physical cause, and even causing others to see apparitions. Suppressed feelings of frustration may push special individuals to unintentionally create phenomena once thought paranormal, or so the theory says. We've been browsing through intelligence agency files and found something. The CIA kept records on poltergeist activity. Brazil, Spain, Argentina, and even America. Declassified papers show the agency was interested in various hauntings around the world that may have actually been gifted individuals misinterpreted by religious officials. Why was the government tracking this? We cover little-known declassified files. Subscribe to join us. The story starts here. A secret Department of Defense report indicates psychoenergetics phenomena within the DoD. Psychoenergetics is a term officials were using to describe two kinds of anomalous mental phenomena, remote viewing and psychokinesis, or PK. If you've followed our channel, you're familiar with remote viewing. This is the ability to describe distant geographical areas or concealed data using a sensing technique not quite understood. U.S. Army projects like Grill Flame and Sunstreak used remote viewers to analyze foreign military sites, smuggling routes, and even strange underground bases. But what you may not know is the Pentagon was also interested in the other side of that coin, psychokinesis, PK. The mental ability to influence physical or biological systems with only the mind. RSPK was an offshoot when the ability was recurrent and spontaneous. Such as in Mexico, 1937, or in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the 70s. There, a woman named Noemia lived with her husband, daughter, and her husband's parents. For two years, she experienced what her family believed was either a poltergeist punishing them for falling away from God, or the result of black magic levied against her from an ex-lover. The group experienced bodily cuts, tears in their clothing, moving objects, and even losing a tooth while sleeping. This case shows up several times in CIA archives, including here, where a RSPK interpretation is made. The belief that Noemia may have special abilities had inadvertently caused the haunting. But just why was the government tracking her case? After reading through many files, we eventually found this from the DoD. Quote, people with suitable PK skills would be identified and possibly trained for achieving repeatable effects. Creating PK countermeasures would also be explored in case China and Russia were doing their own research. A report for the Defense Intelligence Agency in 91 wrote these skills could include teleportation, levitation, and materialization. Obviously, the military applications of this are significant. Remote accessibility to computers, locks, switches, and other sensitive machines. How far did research get? Files write Ingo Swan, an early gifted subject, was able to mentally affect a magnetometer buried under a building shielded by superconducting metal. It's disclosed that unnamed sensitives were also able to influence a random number sequence. Generated by beta decay of the element strontium, zeros and ones were normally spit out at a 50-50 split over a large enough time frame. This changed when these unnamed sensitives concentrated on the machine. They reduced the portion of ones by a whole percentage point. 
A report to the Army at the time claimed this was highly significant. Also evident as we read through the files is a fear of communist Psy soldiers, such as here, when someone inside the DIA took interest in a Soviet study claiming supersensitives were attempting to heal others using just their hands. We don't know how far other countries got, but the U.S. spent over a decade studying this. And the way the project concluded? Well, leaves a bit of mystery. In 91, private contractor SRI International, working with the DIA under codename Stargate, stated they were not able to sufficiently prove PK worked consistently, or how it worked. But it wasn't willing to give up. Here, a research plan beginning in 92 describes a four-year process that would lead to practical applications of PK by 96. At the time, officials felt it was still possible to validate its existence alongside remote viewing with the right experiment setup. A slideshow presented to the DIA verifies this goal, calling it a long-range plan. It even mentions arranging for external assistance, possibly non-government funding sources, though we can't be sure. The slideshow also claims that while PK research stalled, some remote viewing sessions gave actionable intel. Such as when viewers predicted a war would soon break out in Iraq. Within weeks, the airstrikes of Operation Desert Storm began. Stargate also helped counter narcotics operations. In 1990, they gave the exact name of a ship carrying contraband. It was boarded, and illegal turtle shells were found in the exact location provided by the viewer. Another RV session gave the name of a ship using a false bottom to smuggle goods. We read it like this. In the early 90s, Stargate officials probably still believed they could crack psychokinesis since they were having some success with remote viewing. And that's where the paper trail, weirdly enough, goes dry. We find no further updates in the 92 to 96 period when significant work was being done to move beyond random number generator experiments. Stargate was terminated and declassified in 95 after this report claimed it wasn't consistent enough for real-world intelligence gathering. But the report only mentions PK five times in a hundred pages. No mention of poltergeist tracking, Soviet studies, SWAN experiments, or the DoD plan to find and train gifted people with PK skills. Maybe we can take this at face value. Maybe work on PK continued until that point and nothing was found, so it wasn't mentioned. But the way it's brushed over makes us wonder, was the last bit of PK research still classified when Stargate was shut down? Was the roadmap's plan to wrap up the next year the reason it was barely discussed in 95? The topic hasn't surfaced in any declassified files since. And the potential power of having soldiers who can remotely access physical systems seems too good to pass up. We use the term real-life X-Men in our title because, well, it sure feels like that was the eventual goal of the DoD program. What do you think? Could governments still be studying this today? Or did it stop in the 90s? Or could they have siphoned the research off to a contractor beyond the eyes of FOIA requests? And hit the notification bell if you haven't. Next episode, we'll dive deeper into a secretive remote viewing project aimed at discovering who might have built vast underground complexes beneath mountain ranges across the world. Patreon supporters, thank you so much. It means a lot. If you like what we do, please consider joining them on Patreon and help us produce one episode a week. Also, consider sharing this with friends or family who might be interested in this topic but have not heard of it. See you next time.